Hi, welcome to my blog. My name is Tom Shu, and today we're going to do a Lightroom tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to process an image inside of Lightroom. And if we have time, we're going to hand it off into Photoshop. And I'm going to use some of the Luminosity Mask tools. I want to keep it as close as I can to 10 minutes. So if I run over, there might be a part two in the following day. So let's get started. Um, the other day, when I was taking images to show. Uh, what's going on with the GPS module or the map module? I ran into this basketball goal, and it's at a church. You'll see that there's a cross back there. And this basketball goal looks like it's seen a lot better days. It was kind of interesting to me. When I take images, I try to look all around the scene to find how I can show people that there's depth to the image and see what other interesting elements are in the scene that might combine with the subject in this case it happens to be the basketball goal to to make a better image so uh, I took this into Photoshop and I did some adjustments the first this is the image that's untouched and if we look over one more this is what I did in Lightroom with the image and and this is what I did with the luminosity masks and this would be what I consider to be my final image so if you look around a scene when you're taking pictures uh, you can really start to play with other elements that are in the scene to create depth. In this case, the basketball goal is not really the subject. The cross is the subject. And if we look over again, we have the basketball goal. And this basketball goal, in this case, if you look at it, it does become the subject, but there might be a picture inside of a picture. Because my vision, looking at this image, was these... these uh, these broken wires, these broken, uh, the net made out of, of uh, this metal wire here, and uh, the way that this thing is dropping below the the, uh, the backboard and looks kind of dangerous actually. So if you zoom in on it, we can see that the focus point was at the front of the rim, and this could be an image by itself if we cropped it. So say if we did a tight crop and framed it something like this this could be an image let's move it over fit the screen with this crop and and that could be an image you know because this is what my vision was in that particular shot so let's uh, reset that image and let's move to the next one and this is giving depth to the image because you can see the cross in the background and it shows that hey there's something deeper in this image so again when I saw it I was I planned on cropping the image and making you know something like this with some negative space on the side of the basketball goal maybe something like this so with that cross it gives some depth so we'll reset that one as well and keep peeking at the image you'll see that there's you know different plays on on that cross and the position to the to the net so let's grab one of these guys and, and let's play with it some so we'll reset this image and if you look at this one you'll see there's some vignetting going on at the top and and uh, it just needs some help so what we'll do is I'll just do a basic development my workflow on this and if we got time we'll hand it off to Photoshop and we'll and we'll finish it so if you know you're shooting raw images you know there hasn't been sharpening applied there hasn't been uh, noise reduction applied you have to process it so um, what we're going to do is we're going to first set a white point and how I set my white point isn't through the white slider the white slider doesn't control the whites what it does it controls the detail in the highlights or the whites area I should say that the highlights let me let's step back for a second the highlights in the shadow sliders are the detail sliders okay these hold detail and uh, the whites is basically an adjustment I use to pull back the whites or add whites if I need to but my white point is always set with the exposure and the black sets the black point so if we hold down the alt key and uh, you'll see that this image uh, doesn't have a white point in it if you look at the histogram there's nothing in the scene that's white so we want to find out where that white point lives and we want to push our exposure over to it so if we hold down the alt key and we slide the slider over you'll see that the pixels in the screen start to clip and when those pixels clip we know that they're white now there's some blue ones red ones and yellows and that's telling you when each channel starts to clip to white so the blues reds and yellows have clipped to white So I'm going to back this off 
until all those pixels are gone and now I know that I haven't clipped the whites but I've brought the exposure over to the point where, right where I'm at the white point if I wanted to add a white point a crisp white well there really isn't a crisp white in this image so I don't really want to set a white in a white point but if I did want to I would just hold the alt key down and, and slide it over until whatever I have in the scene I want is white however I don't want to do that in this particular image I'm going to bring it over just to where the whites are gone so to get back some of that detail I'm going to drag this highlight slider down and you'll see that the texture in the backboard starts to come back the next thing I want to do is I'm going to come down and set a black point I'm going to hold down the alt key and I'm going to do the same thing but oppositely I'm going to bring this down until I think that the area of that backboard here is dark enough without clipping it all to black. I just want it to have a shadow area, but I know right here there's going to be some black information. If we zoom in, you'll see that in that shadow area there would be a, what they call a black trap, and so would these two holes. They would not have any color in them. They would be black. So if we hold down the Alt key and we slide it to the right, as you notice, those holes aren't holding black information. So we'll bring this down to those holes and that those welds at the bottom do hold our black information. Maybe bring it up just a hair. Don't want to clip it too much. Okay, so now we have a black point. And those holes work a lot like the spider cube does for uh, a black trap. Okay, so now we have our black point. So now it's time to make the detail come back in the image. So in the shadow area, if we grab the shadow slider, this is going to only affect the dark area and it's not going to affect the whites. So if you look at these light areas, if there's any brown in there it will affect it, but if we had it set to white it would not touch it. Okay, so the shadows only affects the shadows. You see? Okay, so I'm going to bring this up just until I can see that shadow detail that I want to maintain in that backboard. Maybe up just a little bit more. And the same with the highlights or the whites. The uh, highlights, since I brought them all the way down, it doesn't affect the black point. Watch these shadows when I bring these highlights up. The black still stays black. Again, the highlights and the shadows are the detail sliders. Okay, So now that we have the image exposed properly, let's move down and fix some of this vignetting that's going on from the lens. Uh, I'm not going to use the vignetting tool down here under effects, where this lets you create a vignette or take a vignette away what I'm going to do is I'm going to correct the vignette that's happening because of the lens so if we go down here in profile on lens correction and I enable it you can see that it's going to correct the vignetting if I bring this slider over you can see that the vignetting is pretty much gone there if I hit the I key it's the information overlay you can see that this was shot with the 8512 and if you're shooting with a Canon or a Nikon lens you can go in and load these lens profiles and select them so this also will work with distortion say for example watch this backboard it's either going to flatten out or it's going to curve and uh, fix any kind of distortion say you're using a fisheye lens so there's the backboard see it kind of bow back or become convex in the front and we'll move it back this way and the backboard flattens out again if you double click on any one of these tags it will go back to where it was originally okay so we're about eight minutes and fifty seconds into this and I'm about ready to go to Photoshop so I'm gonna hit I again and go out if you hit control E that will export the image into Photoshop that's the shortcut and right here I'm gonna go to the channels and this is where you would load a luminosity mask okay if you hold down the control key and you click on the RGB you'll see it makes a selection based on all of the highlights okay and we want to save that selection as a separate alpha mask so what we'll do is we'll hold down the alt key and we'll go down here to this mask right here and we'll click it and it's going to save that selection and we'll call this just the lights now we have a mask and you can see it's right here in gray that has all the highlight information and we can invert that so it only has the shadow or the dark information so this can be very valuable when we go in and start making adjustments so I'm going to wrap this tutorial up and uh, 
next time we'll go into the luminosity mask and I'll show you how everything is uh, adjusted and sharpening is applied selectively and uh, so thanks for watching